pardon me if I cough while I'm doing this, but uh, let me, uh, let's see, get to, there we go. Okay, so I want to talk just a little bit about triple integral setups. Um, here's a pretty simple shape. The red is the x-axis, the green is the y-axis, the blue is the z. And it's a pretty simple three-dimensional shape. And let's imagine we're trying to find the mass of this thing. So we have a variable density rho of x, y, z throughout this whole shape. And so for each little bunch, a little bit of, the sh of uh, volume in here, call it dv, we're going to have rho dv worth of mass. And we'd like to add that all up or integrate that all. So we're going to get a triple integral of rho dv. And I just wanted to point out some things about setting these things up, some perspective stuff, um, no pun intended, uh, on how to, to think about these. So one way to think about it is to slice the object up. And let me get a section plane going here. Um, so here's a one way to think about it. I take this object and, what the heck, what do you mean nothing selected? There we go. For all the different x values, I could, uh, I can look at a slice for a fixed x, and that's going to have coordinates y and z. That's in the green and the blue directions. And so, like, here's a fixed fixed slice in x, and I am going to get a slice, and that's a two-dimensional object, and I can do a double integral of that. And so I can just think, okay, that's a two-dimensional slice, a lamina, as the way the book says it, and I'm going to do the double integral of the density over that to get the mass, and then I'm just going to go on my weary, merry way with all the other slices and add those up. So that's a perfectly good way of thinking of things, and it emphasizes that's going to have x as the outer integral, and then a yz double integral on the inner one, and it doesn't really matter for this way of thinking which one is the innermost of those integrals. So that would be consistent with setting it up as in this way, with the x integral being the outer thing, and let me just emphasize with some brackets, a yz integral being the inner thing. And here it happens to be that the y limits are constantly from 0 to 1, um, because if you look at these planes moving, the z changes, but because I picked a pretty simple object and I'm not very good at Google SketchUp, uh, the, the y's happen not to change, but in general they could change. Um, so that's one way to think about it, as an x integral and the inner thing is a double integral. But often you want to take the op opposite perspective, and that is to have the double integral be the outer integral, and then the extra to be a single integral on the inside. And how would that work? Well, the perspective there is to really emphasize the floor plan, so let me take that section plane away, and orbit a little bit. So here we're looking down onto the y, at the xy plane, and the floor plane of this guy is just a rectangle. It doesn't look very rectangular because of the perspective, but it's just a rectangle uh, going symmetrically in x and from 0 to 1 in y. I don't have any axes, any units on my axes, sorry, but that's, I don't know how to do that in SketchUp. So we have that floor plan. And whereas for a double integral, we always would just would have integrated some function over that floor plan, what we do now is we think for every point in the floor plan, we pierce this thing with, I'd like to say, with a shish kebab. So I can sort of indicate that. Let me just draw a dot on the bottom face here somewhere, if it'll let me do that. I don't think it wants to let me do that. I don't know why not. So here's a, um, well, okay. There's a dot on the bottom, pretty much. And then I just pierce it from top to bottom. There we go. With the shish kebab parallel to the z-axis. And I just add up the amount of stuff on that little shish kebab alone. And then that's going to be something that depends on both x and y, on which point I picked in x and y, or which point in the floor plan, in other words. And that's going to be a double integral in x and y. That's going to take me to this kind of thing. The floor plan setup is minus 1 to 1, 0 to 1 for this one, because it's a rectangle. It happens to be simple. And dy dx, you could do that as a dx dy, of course, depending on how you like to set up the floor plan, whatever's easiest and most appropriate for this integral. And then for every point in that floor plan, 
the shish kebab pierces from the bottom, which I'm calling f of x, to the top, which I'm calling g of x. In general, that's going to be f of x y, of course. That's going to be g of x y. The reason I had only f of x here is it's a little bit of a simple shape. This thing was constant in the y direction, this uh, top surface, and the bottom surface was constant in the y direction as well. So it didn't actually involve a y. And of course, in general, the floor plan is going to be something like h of x, oops, to k of x, if the floor plan dimensions are more interesting. And then that's going to be more generally some a to b. Okay, and that's a much more general triple integral that happens to go in the dz, dy, dx order. Okay. Give you one more look at the object. I think that's a good place to stop.